So the reason that I store my syrup in bulk containers like this is so that I can use it all year long. I don't wanna be stuck with a, a shelf full of eight ounce bottles when I'm out of quartz. So I can assess the demand on our, on our syrup as we sell it throughout the year. And we bottle several sessions throughout the off season and we, we use it as we need it. So I use a modified beer barrel to store my syrup. I, I like it because it's not so big that I can't move it myself. I can actually pick this up it's difficult, but I can pick this up and put it in the pickup truck if I need to all by myself. You can store if you're a big producer in big 55 gallon drums. If you're a small producer, there's a lot of um, smaller options, even some plastic options that are acceptable for hot packing. And I just want to show you as I open my, my barrel here, um, I, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how, how much of a vacuum is on, on the contents of the barrel. Um, and that happens, it's the same principle as when you pack in your glass bottles. When you put your hot syrup in, as it cools off, it creates a vacuum on its contents, which disallows the bacteria and mold to ever exist in that environment. So just take a listen as I, as I open this up. As you can see, I can't get this open by hand. I, I don't have the strength to actually pry this lid off with my, with my fingers. Um, so what I do is I actually, I'll pry it off with a screwdriver, but just listen as, it, as I get it open. So you can see there was a lot of vacuum on that, on that barrel as I, as I struggled to get this cap off. And that's, that's what you want to see. So now we are going to be using the air diaphragm pump from the filter press, on the filter press, to pump the syrup from our barrel up into our jet burner pan. I want to talk about the valve on this filter press. There's a selector valve that allows it to do two different functions. It allows you to either divert the syrup downward into the filter press plates, and it allows you to divert the syrup out through the transfer valve for the purpose of, of pumping your liquids like we talked about before. So, what the way this works there's a t etched inside the the perimeter of the stem on the valve inside that nut there's a, a t etched and that represents the position of the t port in this valve so in this position right here you can see this the liquid is allowed to pass through the valve straight but not down there's no there's no etch pointing downward in this position it's deadheaded the pump can't even function in this position, you're actually allowing syrup to, to flow uh, down and out, which isn't very practical. And in this position right here, that's, that's cycling the filter press. It's diverting the syrup down into the filter press banks and not out our transfer valve. Um, that's important to look at that. Once you are familiar with your filter press, you can just remember, okay, handle up for transfer pump, handle back for filter press. So. Um, but it's important to at least familiarize yourself with that. You might never actually use the transfer function of this pump, but it sure is handy for what we're about to do. So uh, we'll get into it by putting our dip tube, which is going to drop in our barrel on the end of the hose. And we can start pumping. So I have air pressure going to my air diaphragm pump and I have a regulator right here because I want the air compressor out of the room where it's where I can't hear it, um, but I can still control it. And so I am in the transfer position right there and I'm going to crack this valve open on the pan and we are going to start pumping. And you can see how that syrup is jerking through with the pump. That's why I only cracked that valve. If I had it wide open, it would probably come shooting out and, and splash up. So at least until I get it running smoothly, I have that valve just cracked open. And, and everyone might have a different situation. You might have this hose hanging on, a, on some kind of a U-pipe or you might have someone holding it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm doing this single-handedly, so I need the ends of my hose fixed, and this is how I chose to do it.
Now, before we fire up the jet burner with the pan full of syrup, we are going to put our density measuring devices in there. We have the Murphy Compensation Float Gold Series Hydrometer. I'm gonna place them near each other in the pan so that the temperature is uniform for them. And I'm gonna take a, a quick visual reading. And as, as I suspected, I'm about one point high, which means I am one degree bricks above my target. And that's how I normally try to pack at the evaporator. I normally try to put the syrup away so that it's one degree bricks above my, my final target. I, and I'm right, I, right now I'm measuring at about 68 bricks. So um, what we're gonna do as we get going is we're gonna add some distilled water to it to bring it down to our target. And that's much easier than the other way around. If my syrup was too light, if it wasn't packed heavy enough, then I would actually have to boil it and actually evaporate it. And that takes a lot of time and a, a lot of energy. So let's fire up. The reason we're going to heat it up is because the syrup has to be packed at a temperature of at least 180 degrees Fahrenheit anyway, and the syrup is much easier to filter when it is hot. My target temperature is about 185 degrees Fahrenheit. I might bring it to 185, maybe 190. Now that we have the pan sitting above the jet burner system full of syrup, it's time to start checking density and monitoring it. Our target for the syrup's density in the bottle is always 66.9 degrees bricks, 66.9% sugar. That's what we're always shooting for. However, that target can be represented anywhere on the stem of this hydrometer based on temperature. What the Murphy float does is it gives us that target. It tells us where on the stem of this hydrometer 66.9 bricks is. 66.9 bricks might be represented by the number 70. It might be represented by the number 60, 65. It can be anywhere on that stem, depending on the temperature of the syrup that we're sampling. So the Murphy float really does all of that work for us. We really don't need to think about all those dynamics. All we need to do is look at the number that the Murphy float is giving us and compare it to the stem on the hydrometer. There is a small target that we're aiming for between being under dense and overly dense. Syrup that is packed in a bottle that is under density will mold and syrup that's packed over density will eventually develop sugar crystals which is somewhat wasteful and very unappealing to look at. If you ever see somebody using a hydrometer during this process without taking any consideration of the temperature or without using a Murphy float or Murphy cup, they are basically taking a shot in the dark. There's no way to get it done without considering temperature or using this device. Yeah. And keep in mind, when you are heating syrup and you're, and you're trying to correct density, you're chasing a moving target. The Murphy float is right there. It's, it's giving you real-time data on, on where this hydrometer should be floating. Now we've warmed up a little bit further the Murphy float is giving me a density target of 63, and the hydrometer is currently floating at 65 and a half, which is in line with what it was before when we started, of course, because the density didn't change. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some water in to the syrup and bring that density down, the actual density down. Remember, we're trying to match the value on the hydrometer to the value on the Murphy float. And once they match, our density is perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some water right now. We have the density perfected. As you can see, the Murphy float is giving us a target value of 60 and a half. And the hydrometer is floating at 60 and a half. That is a direct indication that our density is 66.9 bricks. All right, this is what it boils down to. We just warmed up our syrup, perfected the density, 
and prepared ourselves to um, get ready to filter. That's right, we're all set to go here. Now what I do is I try to avoid stirring it because our density is perfect. I don't want too much steam to rise out of that. In fact, once we uh, get going on the next step, we'll put a lid on it too. 